In the preceding videos, we became familiar with indefinite integrals. In this video, we go a step further to calculate definite integrals. The big difference between indefinite integrals and definite integrals is that with a definite integral, instead of being interested with the entire area under a curve, we're interested in a specific range. So I've denoted that here as this range from x1 to x2. So with a definite integral, instead of getting the area under this whole gray curve, we're just interested in this area under the curve between x1 and x2. So we denote that with our integral notation here with the start of the range that we're interested in at the bottom of that character, and then the end of the range at the top of that character. Other than that, the notation is the same as any of the indefinite integrals that we looked at in earlier videos in this series. All right, so now that you know what definite integrals are, let's go through an example with some numbers so that you can understand how we calculate a definite integral. So let's say that the equation that we'd like to integrate is this equation here, y is equal to half of x. So I've plotted out how this function looks here. And then let's say that you're interested in the area here from the range of x is equal to one to the range of x being equal to two. So we want the area that's shaded in in gray here underneath this curve. So to do this, we can use a definite integral. So specifically, Here's our function. Here is the variable that we'd like to integrate over, x. And then we indicate at the bottom and the top of the integration operator the particular range that we would like to integrate over, that we'd like to calculate the area in. So we'd like to calculate it from 1 to 2. So here we go, 1 and 2. All right, so the first step in calculating a definite integral is to compute the indefinite integral. So using the techniques from earlier videos, from the preceding videos in this series, we can integrate this equation, half of x, pretty quickly. So first, according to the constant multiple rule, we can ignore the half in front of the x, and then we can use the power rule to integrate x. So according to that power rule, x to the power of 1 will have 1 added to that power, so it becomes 2 and then we divide by two as well. So that is what we get after applying the power rule to x is everything in the brackets here. And then we can bring the half back into the picture that we originally ignored. Don't forget that with indefinite integrals, we have this constant of unknown value that is present and you need to uh, make sure that you include that. So simplifying a little bit, we can multiply half into the brackets here and so instead of having x squared divided by two, we end up with x squared divided by four. And yes, that plus c is still kicking around. Okay, so that's the indefinite integral. Now, we can use that information to find the area in here. So first, let's find the area of this triangle here, of this part of the curve. So to do that, we substitute in one for x in our indefinite integral here. So I've just copied and pasted the indefinite integral, but now we're going to substitute one in for x. And so one squared becomes just one. And so our result for this section here under the curve comes out to one quarter. And yes, we still have that unknown constant lingering around. The next step is to find the area of this bigger area under the curve. So to do that, we drop in two for x. And again, I've just copied and pasted our indefinite integral here. We drop two in, two squared is four, four divided by four is one. And yes, that plus c, that unknown constant is obviously still around. Now, here's where things get really interesting. So if we want to find the area in this section here, well, we can use the areas that we just calculated. So substituting in one for x and two for x respectively, we just 
found out that this area under the curve is a quarter of a squared unit, and this area is one squared unit. So to find this area here, we can simply subtract the smaller area from the larger one. And that will leave us with the area of this part of the curve. So this equation here represents the big triangle here under the curve. And this equation represents the small triangle under the curve. So by subtracting this small triangle out of the larger triangle, we're left with this area. And so that's what I've uh, captured down here in mathematical form. So we have our big triangle of one unit squared plus C, and we subtract then our quarter squared units, also plus C, and in so doing, the C's cancel out because we're subtracting this second part here. So C minus C, the C disappears, and we're left with one minus a quarter, that comes out to three quarters. And that's the solution. So this area here is three quarters of a squared unit. Cool, right? So hopefully discovering how to calculate definite integrals by hand using the visual approach in this video made it pretty easy. Up next, I'll show you how to calculate definite integrals in Python, and then I'll provide you with a comprehension exercise so that you can test your definite integral knowledge. To be sure not to miss the next video in this series, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for taking part in this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and comment. To be sure not to miss any of my content, head to johncrone.com and sign up for my email newsletter. You're also welcome to add me on LinkedIn. Simply mention that you're a viewer of the Machine Learning Foundation series. And finally, you can follow me on Twitter too if that's your social medium of choice.